This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, August 22nd, brand new date, brand new episode, brand new you. Uh, but one of our favorite old sponsors, and that's Squarespace. Squarespace, what an easy uh, uh, p- a product to sell. Yes. Be- because uh, creating websites is difficult. Not easy to do. But Squarespace makes it easy. So if you ever need to create a website or a online portfolio or a blog, even a store. And guys, it's 2018. I think you should really, everyone should have their own online website. It's technically store. technically still 2016. I just want this podcast, podcast to be relevant for the next few years. Oh, I see. So if you're listening to yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Totally. In like 2017 or 2018. Like, yeah. It's ever a little bit more evergreen. Right. Um, so Squarespace makes it easy. They have beautiful templates, seamless commerce tools, free custom domain. Every time you sign up for a year of Squarespace, they'll throw in a custom domain free for a year, which well, is a cost shucks. you can avoid. Uh, unfortunately for you, you're probably thinking there aren't any good domain names available still. Untrue. That is not true. Every time we uh, Squarespace sponsors an episode, we give you guys two available domain names that are available at the time of recording. I'll just launch into mine right now. It's fartnugget.com. Incredible that that's around. Fartnugget.com has survived 40 years of people buying domain names. Really amazing. Can't believe that. Fartnugget.com. What's yours? Jump on that. It's howtoshart.com hmm? in case you ever forget <laughs> what how to shart.com <laughs> yeah got it so whether you're building fart nugget how to shart or maybe your dad's friend's uncle needs a website and he'll pay it ten thousand dollars uh <laughs> and you're like yeah i can do that uh just remember i'll squ- build it beautiful don't worry uh squarespace.com Slash if I were you. And if you go to squarespace.com and enter our offer code, if I were you, you'll get 10% off. They're already low prices. So the prices aren't very high. And if you do use the coupon code, if I were you, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, set your website apart. How do you like that? Beautiful. Uh, let's get right to it. This was a fun one. We literally just recorded it. I can't wait any longer to post it. It got real. Things always, always got real. Enjoy. When you try your best to seize the cheese And your girlfriend gives you an STD What can you do? To fix you Yeah It's Coldplay, dude <laughs> You know Coldplay is playing tonight at the Rose Bowl? What are we doing here? Uh, we're recording a podcast Oh uh, Alright That was by Tony Patty. Tony Patty uh, says that's a parody of a Coldplay song. Very well. Obviously. Don't have any other music to promote, but if you can shout out r slash Jake and Amir, that's our subreddit. What? And fuckmefinally.com, which is his attempt at a If I Were You transcription website uh, that he built. So this guy made this song, which is great. This guy has it all. And And then... (laughs) He's completely selfless. All of, all of his self-promotion is just us. He's helpful, and then he's also good at singing and, I guess, songwriting. And dancing, I assume. I assume Tony Patty can make a song and a dance out of it. Um, I don't want to make any money off the transcription site. It's just something I started to try to help fans find your bits. That's really cool. So, toe dot to Tony. Would you say Tony can stop? Like, all that bullshit now. Like, he what got what mean? he wanted. His little fucking shout-out. Well, the transcription site sounds like an ongoing project, so you probably wouldn't <laughs> want to alienate him in any way. All right. Anyways. But I feel like it's on autopilot at this point. Oh, Tony no, got his is. little... Is it? Tony got his heroes talking about him for a couple seconds. Oh, jeez. 
Oh, here we go, Tony. Here we go. Are you happy? They say don't meet your heroes. Also, don't listen to them. <laughs> also, don't meet me specifically. You can meet your heroes. Just yeah, don't meet me. Just Amir's a monster. Uh, Sunday night sesh. Recording this. Going to turn it around, upload it right away, because you've been uh, all over the place. I've been jet-setting a little bit. I haven't seen you in a week. Yeah. Did you miss me? I missed you. I missed you. Now I got to kiss you. <laughs> Get away from me, man. <laughs> hey! <laughs> He's Frenching me. You just need the top of my lip. You need my lip into my teeth, you ass. It was hot. Um, God. What was it? Oh, yeah. Nantucket and then New York for a wedding. Yeah. Jesus. Which part was better? Obviously, you have to rank them. Oh, interesting. Um. You know, I guess Nantucket is like uh, it's oh, it's seven days worth of like festivities and relax le- relaxation and family time. And yeah, wedding is just like all of like the enjoyment of a week long vacation condensed into one night. Oh, uh, because you were like, I'm a, I'm having reserved, relaxed, quiet family time, and now it's time with my friends. Right. And I'm gonna fucking go all out. The wedding is like, or the. Uh, being in Nantucket is like smoking a joint. Oh, that's you really cool. In, that's really cool. And being at the wedding is like taking Molly, Molly. off the fucking <laughs> walls. I love yeah. everybody. Love's in the air. What's another example of a drug that I do? Um, weddings cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and the, I Nantucket. tried heroin yesterday. Right, that's wedding. <laughs> what? That's very wedding. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's was more Nantucket. I was arrested. Okay, that's totally wedding. <laughs> uh, and then you were hungover, threw up on an airplane again? Yeah, I've got to get out of the habit of vomiting on... Uh, well, I, this time I threw up in the family bathroom at JFK. Vomiting on an airplane seems nearly impossible. The lavatories are so th- small. Oh, it sucks. You have to like you have to like straddle the you mini. Can't, yeah, you can't like get on. You can't, you can't get mean, on your you knees. You wouldn't want to get down on your knees in there anyway. <laughs> but you really have to just sort of like crouch and <laughs> and just aim. Oh man, yeah, crouch and aim, like crouch and pray because your your eyes are shut <laughs> involuntarily. And then you you you, you flush sort of angle your your mouth towards the toilet but who yeah knows? you flush the toilet then you open the door and there's a little line there and do you give you're like oh, your right. eyes are watering and do you give like the whole like hey Cry, like crying yeah uh, it's like i usually just like head down walk back to my seat but sometimes i walk out and i'm like yeah who's next <laughs> that's really awesome you know, like whatever like, yeah hey, we've all been jack there. and coke to my seat sweetheart <laughs> i need a little hair of the dog <laughs> yeah and it's 7 a.m and they don't have that stuff right. yet and then i then i slap a flight attendant's ass what and, do you and say he punches me in the <laughs> gut <laughs> why he's like don't talk to me like that. <laughs> yeah because it's illegal for you to say right. that shit and to talk to him like that and totally. to slap him like yeah, that. yeah to slap him on the ass, ass. Is illegal. <laughs> i don't even know if it's like totally illegal or if it's just like right it's really, not like really assault <laughs> well it is assault <laughs> so but you don't you didn't hurt him you just made him feel sexually uncomfortable oh, so it's sexual assault yeah sexual right, assault that's definitely legal though. all right cool all right. glad we got <laughs> to the bottom of that <laughs> i'm not allowed to fly anymore uh this is if i were you the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us I'm Amir. I'm Jake. I actually had a pretty chill week too. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I was going to. I was going to save it for the after the break. Well, right? forget about it because I actually haven't done shit. So maybe we should just gloss nice over week? it. Did you do anything interesting? Um, did I do anything interesting? You tell me. I I, well, I, <laughs> I can't. I wasn't here. <laughs> right. No. For of course, <laughs> obviously. You uh, said you tell me like you're mm, you were just mm-hmm, showing me a mm-hmm, tattoo mm-hmm. on your stomach. <laughs> when in fact I just I sort of hurt my back. <laughs> Did you hurt your back? I like I I have a I have what appears to be like some sort of bruised back for no for seemingly no reason mm-hmm. other than old age. The long nights, dude. Oh, I like you stay out last night. Oh forget about it, dude. Two I mean, AM? Three oh, AM? Oh, where am? Up, up, up. One? No, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, less than four. I should have said down. Did you? Four get, was too late. Did you get late night food or did you get late night sex? Nice, dude. You gotta choose. One, I got these. Baby. I got these cracked pepper baked lentil chips, there, and I went okay. to not town because obviously I don't want to overdo it. Right, even though you I was did drunk. fuck the shit out of the bag. Yeah, I, I'll fuck a bag. I, I fucked the bag. Uh, all right, these uh, are real emails from real people. Uh, we're going to give them fake names. Spent all week searching for the best four questions we can find. 
Appreciate um, that because I was uh, nary in the shape to hunt for questions. You were earlier. you were gone. Although, don't when do weddings end early? Like yeah, weddings end this, earlier than nights out. Well, this the wedding ended at midnight. But they had shuttle buses that took everybody from the botanical garden where it was to Tortilla Flats mm. in the West Village where there was just like, you know, uh, they had rented the entire bar. Oh, I see. So it was so like a night out in New York in addition to We stayed out till five. And I was, and also like Dave and Jeff and Mikey were there and the boys and Sarah Schneider was there. The girls, you know, it was just, a, it was a great time. And it ended... Like 18 hours ago, 5 a.m. You say 5 a.m. this morning, basically. Yeah, and I went then back you're to Mike and Sarah's apartment, uh, <laughs> and we're we're like gonna get have like a nightcap or something at like and 6 a.m. This is like I think we walked in at like 4:30 or 5, and I, as soon as I got there, it's like what is no? <laughs> <laughs> and then when was your flight? Uh, not till three. Oh, three. okay, that's pretty solid. So, so you got to till, sleep. A I little slept till bit. noon. That's good. Woke up, wanted to die. All right, and let's, here I am, still do. I actually feel better, but I still hate myself <laughs> all right let's see if you can at the very least answer some questions with me mm -hmm. uh so oh no this is a guy's name i'm i'm a boy he's a high school boy what about one of your high school boys that were at the wedding yeah yeah we'll only do uh high school boys from the wedding well i will i'm gonna omit the twin evasion boys because that's they, they already get enough dap yeah, um, I'll do Eddie Gaga. All right, Eddie Gaga writes, Hey guys, I'm a boy in high school and I have a little dilemma. I broke up with my girlfriend the other day and she really hasn't been taking it well. She has been texting me daily, refusing to let our relationship go. We made a plan when we were still together that I would go visit her cottage with her family. Now, four days after we broke up, she's bringing it up again? To make matters worse and to make me feel much more guilty, her super nice mom is willing to pay for my bus down there. They're not an ideal fa financial situation, so this is a decently big offer. Anyway, what should I do? If I went with her, I'm sure she would end up making moves on me or making me feel bad for breaking up with her. Is it impolite to just say no to her parents' offer or to something that she was really looking forward to? Fucking help me, guys. Cheers, Eddie Gaga. I can't believe this Eddie Gaga character is even entertaining <laughs> the idea of taking them up. I, what, I'm sure that she'll make me feel guilty or make move. Yes, of course. What's the what other what what's like the, the other option is just like pretending you guys are together for another weekend where right. she but then she would make moves. Yeah. She's like, either angry or you guys pretend you're together again. Like, she doesn't have some ulterior motive that he doesn't know. He's like, I think there's, like, something a little more, like, a little more than meets the eye about <laughs> yeah. this invite. I hate to like, read between the lines here, yes, but it seems she, like she's still into it. She clearly, clearly is trying to get... I mean, don't do that. That's crazy. Right. Uh, and what's making her Kim considerate is that... It was a super nice offer, not that it was a lot of money, but that they're in not in a great financial place so that the offer, relatively speaking, was a very nice one. Yeah, and so now he's like – You want them to go broke a little bit? <laughs> yeah, isn't to it? To be polite? <laughs> I feel bad. They don't have a lot of money, so this offer is a great one. Yeah, I feel, I feel guilty enough to actually make them spend the little money they have. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, – actually, the sentimental value is through the roof. I feel bad not cashing it in. Uh, I, I – I have been in this situation. I've gone on vacations with exes before. Gone on vacations with exes? Yeah. Where did you go with your ex? Um, there, <laughs> I think there was like, there was definitely like more, there was like one relationship I was in where we were like constantly kind of like together and breaking up. Yeah, in and out. Yeah. They call it the hamburger relationship. I've, you know what? I Full disclosure, I think I've done this in, in at least three of my relationships. <laughs> okay, so you're not, you're not outing anyone. Uh, so... Yeah, and I, it's never ever been like a good thing. So, that, and that's why I'm not I'm not judging you completely, uh, Eddie Gaga. But he's I also saying, young; he's in high school. Oh yeah, I mean, I did this when I was in high school for sure. <laughs> so I'm telling you, as a 31 year old uh, who's probably done it as recently as five years ago, <laughs> five minutes ago. Uh, don't Nantucket do it. was that right? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Your I was on vacation with uh, with three of my exes. Actually, <laughs> it was a uh, with your parents after you emancipated yourself. <laughs> they still wanted you to go. Yeah, uh, they love me or some shit. 
Anyway, what should I do? Don't go. Don't hang out with your exes. Mm -hmm. There's only one reason people still hang out, and that's because they're probably still interested in you. I think there's like a misconception. It's easy to misconstrue this Mm -hmm. that like hanging out with your ex and giving them time and all that stuff is something nice because they're so sad and kind of the one thing that can make them happy is spending more time with you. Right. Um, But the truth is, the hard truth is that once you've decided to break up with someone, the nicest thing you can do is... Disappear. Stay broken up. Yeah, just be broken up. And make... Yeah, so you tell her, I really want to do the nice thing. And then she's like, great, so we leave in two days and the bus ticket is X, Y, and Z to the cottage. Of course. We'll tell your parents I'm not going to just take a bus. I'd like to... (laughs) fly private. And if they don't want to foot that bill, then it's not really a nice offer. It is a cottage after all. What is a cottage? Uh, is it a house? Yeah, it's it's probably maybe like, like a quaint house, like a, a, a country house. So a cottage is just a type of house. I guess so, yeah, there's a, a cottage style. A co- so there can be a cottage style house in LA? Uh, yeah, for sure. So that's just the type of architecture? Um, I guess so, yeah. And cottage cheese... Is, is uh, also yeah. yeah. It's just a, I was gonna say not that yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. a house that looks like or it's not right. cheese made out of. I feel like you shouldn't have to have gone on this journey. Got it. You no, yeah. Even be talking about it. You can't like you make just, a house out of cottage like, cheese. Who, oh. Like it's just the word cottage. Now I see where your brain has been this entire time, <laughs> <laughs> and it is a stinky, stinky room. <laughs> Walls are curdling. Oh, there's dripping dairy and curds from the ceiling. I it didn't is realize a, it was a cheese house. Yeah. You should check it out. <laughs> uh, all right. Here's another question about uh, exes and breaking up. That's kind of the other side of things. So I thought we should pair it up. I love it. This is a girl writing. Oh, great. Let's Sorry, a it. chick. Okay. A dame. Come on. A bird. Let's do the bride herself, Christine. Wow. Or as we called her in high school. X team. Very nice. And was she a beautiful bride? She was a beautiful, a beautiful, drop dead gorgeous. I've seen some really nasty little brides, and I've mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, during the wedding. I've said, if you're... anybody has a reason these two should not be wed, yeah, because she's a butt ugly bride. <laughs> she makes an ugly bride. And it's not that I don't like the dress and the makeup, because like I actually think that helps yeah, a lot wedding, of people. It's one day that everyone deserves to feel beautiful, and you are there. So for the wedding <laughs> hashtag, I think we should change it to ugly bride. It already is ugly bride. Well then, <laughs> then we're all on the same page. All right, this lady, Christine, writes, My ex and I broke up about six months ago. As breakups go, it was pretty mutual, and we were both on the same page. We decided to stay friends, which I had no real hope for, assuming it's just something you say to make yourself feel better during the breakup. However, in the past six months, he's been chatting to me pretty frequently. The conversations are usually initiated by him, especially in the beginning. We stay away from personal stuff, but the conversations are definitely longer and more frequent than would be expected among among exes. Now, I've been out of town for the better part of the six months for work and travel and whatever, and I know he's casually seeing this other girl, which I'm more or less okay with because I've kept pretty busy myself, if you know what I mean. However, that's right. However, I know that this girl has to leave town about the same time that I'll be coming back permanently. I would be lying if I said I didn't still have at least mixed feelings for him. We dated for a long time, and there was a lot of good in our relationship. Does the fact that he keeps talking to me mean that he might have feelings for me, too? Or does he just actually want to be friends and likes me as a friend but has no romantic or sexual interest in me at all? Was the girl he was with just a casual rebound? I can't imagine she would be okay knowing how frequently we've been talking, but that's just an assumption. I don't know. I don't know. Am I reading too much into this? Am I, or am I just, is he just being friendly? Is he being normal and I'm being insane? Is he sending me signals in any way? Or am I just taking this way too far? Help! Love, Christine. She did go a little insane towards the end of the email. She's got, yeah. She's... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Furious. Oh, I should say that this was typewritten and faxed to us. Oh, right. 
I totally forgot we had a fax. Yeah, you guys. So the email for the show is if I were you show at gmail.com. And if yeah. you want to fax us, it's just 212 555 8788. Yeah. So we probably check our faxes <laughs> more infrequently for sure. <laughs> Just because be sure you send a cover page. We're out of toner is all. <laughs> so we're out of toner and then fax paper. But this is the last one that came in. Do you remember your first experience with a fax? Yeah. It was like before the internet. It was I amazing. Mean, it still is kind of fucking crazy to me. Right. But now with email, like email is also crazy. But like the it fact that crazy. you send images and it prints out of my fax. I think that's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> I guess everything is crazy. Oh, yeah. Life. <laughs> uh, so, have you ever experienced this fuzzy post six months still talking mixed feelings about the other person? Uh, I'm really like uh, a cut and run type of dude, you know? Yeah. When I, it's over, it's over. Yeah. I yeah. I've never, I've never hooked up with an ex-girlfriend. Right. I mean, I've like gotten broken up and gotten back together with one of like some of my earliest girlfriends. But in my, in my mature life, I've, I'm never ever um, gone back. Right. Um, but if this guy is texting, is there a chance he just wants to be friends? I don't think so. Right. I don't. I don't see someone texting. If this is the girl listening, I don't see someone texting you and it being completely innocuous, him not wanting to hook up in any way. Yeah, for sure. It's charged. It's loaded. It's There are underlying feelings. There is tension there. Yeah. And also, uh, I can sense that you're not entirely okay with his new relationship because you said, which I'm more or less okay with. And then you also said, is she just a casual rebound? Yeah. Like, how would we know that? You just <laughs> want her to be a casual rebound so that you feel better so that you can hook up with this guy a little bit more guilt-free. Right. I think what's More happening. More or less okay with it, I uh, suppose. What's happening in my humble opine is that this guy, this guy's sort of doing what I would do, which is I'm not going to make any moves. I'm just going to constantly make myself aware. Oh, I'm texting you. Hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing this. I'm making myself available to you, making her aware, so that she she can fire the bullet, she right. can make the move, but he's not gonna do it, and maybe he, he doesn't want to feel guilty about cheating on this casual maybe thing, right? But when in fact, if whether you cheated on her because you did it or because you put yourself in a situation like mm -hmm. that, it doesn't the the ends don't don't justify the means. If right. you if you cheated on your lady, it doesn't matter if you went out actively and pursued it or if you put yourself in a situation where you got drunk next to an ex-girlfriend and one thing led to another here, here, i guess that's brother. a little bit easier to explain to her maybe that's what he wants to do maybe yeah it's like it's, she's like so how did it happen well we just met up and we, we got drunk and mistakes happened rather than like so how did it happen well i've actively been pursuing her and i asked her out several times and yeah. she eventually came but i mean like it, all that other stuff it does come to light in like a really bad way because she's like why would you get together with your ex like oh well we've kept in touch let me see your <laughs> messages oh my god you talk to her all the time you know I, like i said before Break up, break up, you know? Break, breaking up is hard to do, but it's necessary to do. So don't do what she did. Don't say what she said. Oh, I meant said. Sorry about your friend. Oh, Ed. I'm puking again. Hold on. <laughs> Related? Any relation to the rap? Uh... <laughs> Uh, 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 specific questions she asked. Does the fact that he keeps talking to me mean that he might have feelings for me too? Yes. Yes. Uh, does he actually just want to be friends? Probably no. not. Uh, was the girl that he was with just a casual rebound? No. <laughs> she meant a lot to him. It still does. Uh, I can't imagine she would be happy knowing... This sounds like a threat now that I'm reading it again. I can't imagine she would be happy knowing how frequently we've been talking. Brian. Yeah, this girl is still like lording something over his uh, his his new girlfriend's head right now. You think there's like... like some... You just need to stop thinking about your ex. Like if you stop thinking about him, then like all of his reaching out and like who he's dating and what he's thinking, then you can actually move on. She hasn't moved on. She's still thinking about him all the time. Yeah. She's obsessing over this dude that she broke up with <laughs> six months ago. Yeah. 
So live your life. Baby. Or just get back together with them. No, no, okay. no, no. Uh Am I reading into this too much? No, probably yes. not. Um. Well, she's not. She's not like saying maybe. Oh, reading sorry, into I, it. Yeah, she's she, reading into an, an appropriate amount. Well, I yeah, sure. I guess the, uh, to interpret it that way, you're correct. So I'll just say, make a decision. Either go for it or not. Don't live in this gray area. That's what the gray area is. What keeps you up at night? Yeah. The gray area is when you're like tossing and turning. You don't know what you want. You don't know what he wants. You don't know if he wants what you want. Mm-hmm. Be honest with yourself first and foremost, and then you can be honest with him but first you have to figure out what you want right uh all right those are my the two ex boyfriend girlfriend questions uh let's take a break and we'll be back with more questions after this thank you as well to framebridge.com for sponsoring this episode framebridge is pretty pretty cool dude uh it's a new easy way to frame things you love uh, and I think the coolest feature of FrameBridge is that you can upload a picture directly from Instagram. That is really cool. How's that for a quick and easy gift? Um, InStyle actually called FrameBridge a genius site that makes custom framing easy. We have uh, custom FrameBridge photos in the office. Two of them. The cool thing is your even your camera phone takes amazingly high-res images. Yeah. And it's kind of a waste to leave them on your computer, on your phone, FrameBridge makes it incredibly easy and affordable to frame these photos. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. You, you know, like just print nice photos, get them framed. It's just so much effort. You have to, you've got to find somewhere that's going to print them the right size, the right quality. Then you've got to take them to a framer. And framing things is not uh, that cheap or easy of a process. Well, now it is. Thank God. Because at FrameBridge, their prices start at $39, and all the shipping is free. And right now, if you go to FrameBridge.com and use the promo code, if I were you, you'll save an additional 15% off your first order. It's a great, great gift for a mother or father or loved or brother or friend or an acquaintance in your life. If you go to framebridge.com for an acquaintance, oh. get a framed photo of them with you. Just an acquaintance gift, not for National Acquaintance a Three Day. Perfect acquaintance gift. Uh, go to framebridge.com and you put the promo code "If I Were You." That's framebridge.com promo code "If I Were You" for fifteen percent off your first order. How easy and amazing and thoughtful for Framebridge to make this website for us. And thanks for sponsoring this episode, Framebridge. Thank you as well to naturebox.com. Old fave. I love Naturebox. Uh, what is Naturebox? It's a subscription snacking service. You go to their website, naturebox.com. You say which snacks you like, which ones you don't, and they'll send you uh, delicious snacks like clockwork in the mail uh, to help you find healthy snacks, resist temptation, and discover new snacks. Straight up, they're, they're, you know what? You don't even need to read all the talking points. All you guys need to know is they're delicious. And they make over 100 ridiculously delicious snacks that are made with uh, better for you ingredients. I obviously love the, the lentil loops, which are sort of a healthier alternative to potato chips. You, lo- you do love lentil loops. I can't get enough of the lentil loops. You also love lentil soup. I like, I guess I'm just pro lentil in general. Yeah. Uh, Jake enjoys the sriracha roasted cashews. I'm you know sure me of so it. Well. <laughs> uh, so if you want to get your own snacks delivered to you, why don't you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you right now and get two bags. That's two bags of delicious snacks without any of the junk for free. That's naturebox.com slash if I were you. Two free bags of bold and unique snacks delivered right to you. Thank you, Naturebox, for sponsoring this episode. And thanks to you guys for testing them out, trying them out. Please do. We get emails all the time of people uh, thanking us for trying Naturebox. So thank you for trusting our sponsors. Why don't we get back to the show? Let's do it. And we're back. What's up? What's up? I posted, or I should say we posted, well... The HeadGum YouTube posted our London live show, uh, which was set to pictures of our London live show taken yeah. by Tom Corbishley. Tom, the man. A kind of a fun slideshow rep- retrospectus way to listen to uh, a bonus episode that you might not have listened to yet. Relive the night. Uh, so that's at YouTube.com slash 
HeadGum. While you're there, subscribe to our channel because we're going to be posting videos from now on, you know, just yeah. every once in a while. We bought lights for the studio. We recorded the Bo Burnham episode. We're starting to record other episodes. Uh, so all those videos for everything are at HeadGum's YouTube channel. We're also traveling very soon. Good are you Lord. Are you okay with that? Actually, you... Not very soon. So I think there's a chance you might stay in Los Angeles for the next couple weeks. Why? Unless you have trips I don't even know about. I'm going to Utah on September 5th. That's that's close. It's that's at least, day. yeah, it's only one time zone away. Um, but the, our next big trip is to Toronto at the end of September. Yeah. Uh, so get your tickets uh, at ifireyshow.com. And then on October, we're going to Minneapolis, Chicago, and Detroit. Toronto, Minneapolis, Chicago, and Detroit. That's yeah. some fun cities. Those are cold cities, but fortunately we're going in warm weather times. Yeah. I do, will the leaves have started to change by then? Um, I'm going to email the mayor of Detroit and ask him. Well, I don't you know. Just if Google it. But What's that? Never mind. <laughs> Google, Google the mayor's, mayor's email address. Email. Detroit mayor email didn't we tw like tweet it at Comptroller one time? No, we tried to get the mayor of Austin on Josh Rubin's live podcast. Oh, no, I was talking when we were trying to name our LLC Trustfall, and my dad said that we needed <laughs> like this uh, somebody's like office to sign off on it, but it was going to take us like six weeks. Oh, we had to email the Comptroller. Like Comptroller, <laughs> Comptroller. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. Should we make a parody about it? Could so oh my god, I think we should. What is a comptroller? Comptrola. That's so weird. The definition of comptroller is a controller. Really? <laughs> so I'll I'll go out on a limb and say comptroller, not a necessary word. You just added the letter P and it means what it meant without the P. Comptroller. That's like saying a treep. Uh, is <laughs> what does it mean? It's a tree. <laughs> a comptroller. Comptroller. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We should do it, dude. We should do we it. We don't man. do parodies anymore. Oh, we haven't written a parody song in a while. So we got the YouTube channel for man. Oh, we could do a full music video. A full comptroller parody. That would be a little off brand, but not terribly so. <laughs> Um, anything else that we should mention? What happened? You already talked about your vacation. You already talked about your week. Well, yeah. you didn't really. Yeah, but it was fine. Yeah, I guess nothing really happened. I went, I did get new shoes. I guess that was a highlight. Worked a lot in, uh, in this office. Shoes um, are good. Yeah, shoes are right. Shoes are tight. I'm going to hold off saying what they are. Hopefully, they'll send me 50 pairs if we decide that we can mention it on the show. That's a good idea. Um, and then... Um, you work out this week? You exercising? Yeah, yeah. Your been, body right? I've been trying to climb and uh, eat better since um, since returning from our European adventure. That's great. Yeah, that's good stuff. What about you? Uh, Nantuck is always pretty healthy because it's all family cooked meals. Right. Working out with my bro. Uh huh. Uh, but then you do look a little hog fat. I was gonna say. Yeah. What well, you gain? Forty? Forty five yeah. pounds? I it looks 48 like forty eight pounds. So you were? What were you before Nantucket? I was around one sixty. Now I'm just a, I'm just above uh, <laughs> two hundred. <laughs> and that was in six days. Yeah, which is pretty. A lot of it does honestly look like hog fat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you, wow! I am a swine man. Yeah, you, you. It's it's insane to see somebody put on so much hog right. fat in less than a week. It's true because it it's is. been six days. Yeah, I'm a pig. Yeah, <laughs> and your skin is starting to turn a little pink and rubbery. I actually hairy. have a curly little tail on my ass. Yeah, let me see that. Yeah, here. You want me to wiggle? <laughs> Bang. Yeah, you can Bang. flick it. There yeah. it is. <laughs> okay, so you are just turning into a swine. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Shit, he's full pig. Uh, do you want to try to answer a few more questions? Yeah. Do you want to answer one about grandmas or one about blowjobs? Ooh. Why don't we do grandma first and then yeah, we'll blowjob? Actually, it's grandmas the same question. Grandmas to get me in the mood. Sorry, it's the well, same question. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, all right. This is a guy. This is a guy. Too big to untie. Let's do I go on to talk to Tank. The groom himself, John. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together. For John. You know, John was such a classic groom. He, I told him that he looked exactly like the groom from the top of the wedding cake. Oh, that's funny. And he said, you know, you're the third person that said that to me. <laughs> I 
I was like, then I think it's definitely true. What, he just had a nice classic all-American look? Yeah, he's just an all-American uh, dude with with a great head of jet black hair. Yeah, and, and then Cumberbund. John, no H or H? Uh, oh, H. Oh, yeah. He is a classic <laughs> man. He's got some new age fuck face, John. <laughs> like Gabrus or something. He's a shit. Harvard man. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, hey guy, John writes, Hey guys, love the podcast. Let's start this email with a description of my situation. My grandma lives with my mom, my dad, and I, and she's super nice and laid back. She always knows how to get what she wants. My grandma would convince my parents to bring her places super far when we could have spent time and gas doing more important things. She has a laptop that she uses just to go on news sites and listens to classical music very loudly. This laptop is way faster than mine and runs the computer games on hers way faster. The, my cousin dropped by and brought this amazing PC that could run my games amazingly, but she claimed the computer first. Now she has two computers and brags about it to me while I play games that load as slow as two dead snails fucking on top of shit that smells like air conditioner. That's shit that the air conditioner is emitting. She also took the printer that she never uses. So my question is... <laughs> How do I at least get one of these things, if possible? I would like the PC, but anything would be great at this point. Thanks again uh, for your advice, show, and sorry for the longest email ever written. <laughs> Good news, buddy. When Grandma dies, you're gonna get all of it. <laughs> you're gonna get. You're gonna get the laptop. You're gonna get the PC. <laughs> <laughs> She has a laptop and a freaking PC. <laughs> and a printer that she doesn't use. She has a compact Presario and a five-in-one workstation. It's she so doesn't know how to scan. She doesn't know how to fax. It is quite charming that she listens to classical music and browses the news. Yeah. And I also like the idea of a grandma that sort of trolls her little... <laughs> Her little shit of a grandson. I claim this computer. <laughs> oh, I, I can have it, right? I'm old and frail. And then she looks at the sun and winks at him. You fucking loser. <laughs> you little piss ant. <laughs> How are the games going? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to fart on your head. <laughs> I, we don't, I don't know what it's like to have a child, let alone the child. your child has a child. Oh man! Like imagine that! Like imagine being—I've never been—I've never even been proud. <laughs> I really haven't ever been proud. Jesus! When would I have ever be when proud? When would I have felt pride of myself? <laughs> when do I feel pride to me? What makes me proud? Because I hear parents all the time being like, "My child is proud," or "I'm proud of my child." <laughs> my child. I have a proud son. <laughs> he is prideful, and I am proud of his pride. <laughs> I am proud of his pride. We're the proud. <laughs> so what the fuck do I, why, when would I feel pride? What's an example of me feeling pride? Uh, like when we, <laughs> when we uh, finished uh, the Jake and Amir web series, did you feel uh, pride? But that's me. We... I'm proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> I am proud of me. You mean like you never <laughs> feel proud of somebody else? Right, yeah. You never, when your brother, uh, like, <laughs> got married, you didn't feel proud of him? Does it work if somebody's older than you? Can yeah, you feel proud of, of your dad? Yes. When do you have, when have you felt proud of your of daddy? my dad? Never. <laughs> but you can't. I feel proud of my mom all the time. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, it makes even less sense. Like, what does it mean? Are you just happy for them? Well, you're, the, like, proud isn't, like, a condescending <laughs> feeling. Yeah, pride is, like... Joy? Yeah, you're, I, uh, I mean, I don't know what the actual d dictionary definition of pride is. Oh, it's just ride. Yeah, it's pride yeah, without so you the can pee only, again. <laughs> and you can only have it of younger people. <laughs> Holy shit. You have to be smaller than them if you want to feel pride to them. Uh, joy in somebody else's success? A feeling of deep pleasure derived from one's own achievements. Wait, own achievements? Well, that's, I guess that's pride. Uh, the achievements are, or the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated. There you go. So you feel pleasure based on somebody else's Deep success. pleasure. It has to be deep. Yeah. A deep, deep pride. Anyway, I guess I'll... How did you even get onto pride? Because <laughs> this question had nothing to do with pride. It's it just was like, it my made, grandma has two computers. <laughs> it made me think about how I don't 
I'll, I, can, I can't understand what it's like to have a grandchild because I don't even understand what it's like to have a son, let alone <laughs> my son make a son. Anyway, this, ge- this girl's son made a son and now she's fucking trolling him, which I assume is how I would react, but I don't know. Maybe this, maybe this grandma isn't proud enough of her boy. Maybe uh, grandma doesn't even know how bad you want the computer. The question is, how does he get? How does he get at least one of these things? He wants the laptop. He wants the PC. I mean, she doesn't have like a fucking workstation, does she? <laughs> doesn't it seem like if she's on her laptop, you could say, hey, Grandma, can I play a computer game? No! Computer? <laughs> I'm right. on the PC! <laughs> I can have I play a... on your laptop? No! Because I'm emailing, too. I need my PC. I'm setting up a freaking LAN party, but I don't want to slow shit down when I'm on the news. So I need the laptop. I need the PC. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're. Uh, I think you could probably just ask her. Yeah. What about asking your parents? That way, it's like, oh, that's so oh mommy and daddy thing. said that I get to use the PC <laughs> oh. actually, and you actually live with them, <laughs> so they make the rules, Grandma. I feel like we're both their kids in some fucking weird way. I'm sorry, it's like you're my older sister, <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What they say goes their their house, their rules. As long as we're under their roof, give yeah. me your fucking laptop. <laughs> I don't get old them. hag. I don't. I don't think of age difference as like a positive or not minus. We're both we're both equidistant from my parents, and we both have to listen to them based on that age difference. <laughs> Can I use your printer? <laughs> First and foremost, I'd like to print a banner. <laughs> Let me print a fucking banner, Grandma. You're. Get off me. <laughs> You're hurting me, Grandma. Um, all right. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to her. Yeah. Ugh, the worst. God. Talk to your grandmother. Oh. All right. Last question. About blowjobs. About the blow, blow, blow jays. This one's interesting. Ready? Oh. Uh, one last guy's name. Frankie. Frankie writes, I got an issue that I would like the solution to. As opposed to the other kind, where you don't care about the solution. Right. Definitely not a deal breaker, but my fiancé doesn't like to swallow. So, as you can imagine, blowjobs aren't a regular occurrence, or really doesn't happen at all, outside of foreplay. She wasn't very experienced in that area when we started dating. She's gotten better, but I'd still love a surprise BJ to completion every now and then. We've openly talked about the subject and my fantasy of roadhead. She just has an aversion to swallowing. How do I change her mind so that I can seize the cheese? Uh, Frankie. Why do you care if she swallows? <laughs> Isn't that an interesting thing? The did she swallow thing? Yeah, I remember that used to be a real big uh, question we would ask in high school and yeah. college. Like, it's, as far as your job, your, the blowjob is complete. And then it's like, yeah, but where does she put the semen? Did yeah. she spit it out or did she swallow the semen? Like, as far as your dick is concerned, the the blowjob is over. Yeah. I mean, I like. it seems like this is two different issues. One is blowjob to completion and the other is swallowing. Like, right. Maybe think swallow. Some, I mean, it's a fetish, I guess. Like, some people think swallowing's hot. So, like, oh, like, yeah, I get, I'm, yeah. I mean, you can't really, that's, that's a huge ask. That's the big, that's the most sexual thing. I'm not even sure I think swallowing is hot anymore. Because then it's like. Because then it's then like, I wouldn't kiss. do that. It's a little, that's, I, like, hey, I didn't ask you to do that. That probably tastes really bad. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. And then it's like empty calories, you know? So it's like, <laughs> why don't we just eat, have rice cakes or some shit afterwards? <laughs> and then there's the, uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, it is a little, I don't know. Maybe it's like an age thing. As we grow older, it becomes less and less sexy. But it is like the stigma or stereotype around swallowing is that it's hot. Yeah. Like you ask and then the the bragging thing is saying, yeah, she swallowed. Right, which is so weird. I, 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 don't, I don't get it, really. But can you ask somebody to swallow? No, don't do that. But, I mean, you could maybe say that, like, I think it's really hot when people do and then <laughs> see if that, like, influences them to give it a shot. But I think it, it doesn't matter. Like, if you really want a blowjob to completion, there's no rule that says she has to swallow your cum. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate completion. So, like, if she runs to the bathroom and, and then go, I get to oh, watch as you shit it out later. Incomplete. And then... 
She did not make a full football motion. I am not counting that. Let's go to the replay. <laughs> yeah. She drooled it. <laughs> it is an incomplete stash. Um, she's gotten better, but I'd love a surprise BJ to completion every now and then. I mean, you do a real issue. You could, you know, like uh, people. I think who stay in long relationships uh, sometimes will tend to have less oral sex. You know, going both ways. Right, because once you have sex, it feels like blowjob is a step back in a way. Like it's in the bases, blowjob isn't a home run. Well, it's just I guess yeah, I guess it's like. You know, when you're in a relationship, who has the time? Let's just get to the point. Let's get to the part where both of us are happy. But I think you you uh, could, aside from the discussion, which it sounds like you guys have already had, you should just uh, start surprise going down on her every once in a while. Mm. You reintroduce mm. oral sex into your relationship the way that you know how, mm. and then she will likely step up and, uh, you know, Match your efforts. This guy said, there's no way in hell I'd ever go down on my fiance. It's gross down there. That's classic. And I want her to swallow the (laughs) cloudy juice that comes out of my cock. She has to taste it. Oh, imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not appealing, but you you like the way a vagina tastes. That's true. So there you go. That's... Just try to picture that. You know, you're... <laughs> I wonder what the percentage. There's probably no census or statistics or average on this of swallow or spit, but it's got to be like, what would you guess? Twenty percent over under. Twenty percent swallow. Swallow. Yeah, I guess twenty or twenty five percent. That's awesome. Let me again email the mayor of Detroit. <laughs> sure. Do you remember the first question we had, or should I just go straight into the good stuff? Yeah, ago? just this one. Just the. Uh, it was something How about many the loads? Oh, foliage, foliage. Oh, yeah. It was that the is, as a PS afterwards. <laughs> so I'll be like, when do the leaves turn autumnal orange or yellow? Yeah. When does the sky catch fire in, your, in your fair city? PS, of all the loads that hit a throat, how many slide all the way down? What does your wife do <laughs> oh pps if you have an airbnb in the detroit a- area i'd love to get some recommendations about that of course perfect uh all right cool the end those are the four questions much like passover the four questions are over uh jake is the youngest child so it is at the end of every episode jake sings the four questions it from the passover apropos. story uh, if you have your own questions, your own theme song, your own anything, the email address for all of that is if I read show at gmail.com. The opening one was written by Tony Patty, and this closing one is really sweet. Uh, it's written and performed by Abby and Steph. Thanks, Abby and Steph, and thanks to you guys for listening. Uh, we'll be back soon enough. Soon enough. Soon enough. Uh, yeah. Sticky situation. I've written you this email that's in need of some attention. I've been told that I'm a 10. There's this girl who's a fan nine. She's really kind of dumb, but that booty's so divine. Been talking quite a bit. I'm boned a couple times. But I'm a Tinder addict. Can't get it off my mind. So should I just keep swiping? Make this dumb whole mind. Oh, did I mention a bone to to this one time? Dear, if I were you, show I'm in a sticky situation. I've written you this email that's in need of some attention. I'm off to college in the fall. I can't make up my mind. If I should keep my boyfriend, please help me to decide. I guess he's got some good points. Big dick for a star. But will he stay faithful or go and break my heart? Then there's the college guys, I think they'd see me right. Maybe his dick's not that big, could try fresh with one night. Then there's option C, he'd never have to know what I do when I'm away or who the hell I bone. If I were you, show I'm in a sticky situation. I've written you this email that's in need of some attention. That was a headgum podcast.